All right, I'm going to be talking about the sampling distribution for the mean. I'm going to be talking about a geyser problem. And let me set up the question for you. Let's say that the average time between eruptions of a geyser is 88 minutes with a standard deviation of 27 minutes. Now, the question is, what is the probability that the time between eruptions is more than 100 minutes? We have five questions to go over. So first type of question, what's the probability that the time interval between eruptions is longer than 100 minutes? Second question, what about a random sample of 11 time intervals taking longer than 100 minutes? And for that, note that we're talking about the mean. Part C, another mean, but now we have 25 time intervals versus 11 and B. Part D, what effect does increasing the sample size have on the probability? Lastly, what might you conclude if a random sample of 25 time intervals has a mean longer than 100 minutes? All right, we're going to talk about all of those. Let's get into it. Part A. Suppose a geyser has a mean time between eruptions of 88 minutes. If the time interval of time between eruptions is normally distributed with standard deviation 27 minutes, find the following. What is the probability that a randomly selected time interval between eruptions is longer than 100 minutes? So this is a picture of what's going on. We're going longer than 100 minutes. Notice that this is describing the distribution of eruptions. They are normally distributed, it says. Also, we got the mean and the standard deviation, 88 and 27. X stands for the time between eruptions. So what we're trying to find here is the probability that X is greater than, as it says, what's it say, longer than, greater than 100. So this is just going to be norm CDF 100, 27. Let's take a look on a calculator. Second distribution, norm CDF 100, comma, 9999, comma, 88, comma, 27. Enter. Okay, 0.328. Okay, so approximately 0.328. So the probability of getting a single time between eruptions to last more than 100 minutes is about 33%. All right, part B. Now we have 11 time intervals. We're trying to find the probability that the mean is longer than 100 minutes. So now we're talking about the sampling distribution because we're trying to find what? We're trying to find the probability that X bar is longer than 100 or greater than 100. So note that we have a specific sampling distribution of samples of size 11 and it's normally distributed with this standard error. So as long as we take into account the standard error, we pretty much can do it the same way as the last one. We're going to get norm CDF 100, 88, 27 over square root of 11. Let's try that on a calculator. Second distribution, norm CDF 100, 88, 27 divided by square root of 11. And what do we get? Point set point zero seven zero. So zero point zero seven zero. Interesting. The probability has decreased in part A. It was thirty three percent. The chance of getting one hundred or more. In part B, it's seven percent. The chance of getting one hundred or more. Hmm, interesting. Sample size has increased to eleven. Part C, the sample size is 25, same situation. We're trying to get the probability greater than 100 still. Notice the only thing that has changed is the standard error. We're dividing by 25 now. That is going to cause this fraction to get smaller. So this curve is actually getting less dispersed, so more narrow. This distance here is decreasing. We're still trying to find the probability that a mean takes longer than 100. So we're going to find the probability that X bar is greater than 100. Find the probability the same exact way, except we're changing the dispersion. Norm CDF, 100, 88, 27 over 5, actually, because the square root of 25 is actually what? 5. Let's try that on a calculator. 
Norm CDF 100. We're just going to change this 11 to 25. We're getting 0 0.013. Our smallest probability. Huh, why is the probability getting smaller? In part A, what was it? 33%. Part B, 7%. Part C, 1.3%. What could be happening? Let's see. What effect does increasing the sample size have on the probability? I drew this picture for you guys. I want you to consider it. When n equals 1, 11, and 25, you get these different pictures. Notice this is a standard deviation. It's 27. Notice here the standard error is being decreased because you're dividing by square root of 11. Here it's getting even smaller because you're dividing by a bigger denominator. Hopefully you can see that in this illustration. In this one, the shaded region is the biggest. Do you see that? Compared to this one, you have a smaller shaded region, and then this one you have the smallest. The reason that's the case is because this is getting smaller. The dispersion is decreasing. Look, that's the dispersion, it's getting smaller. As the sample size increases, the dispersion gets smaller. Your estimates actually get more accurate. They're closer to 88. In this case, the dispersion is the biggest. Your estimates can be all over the place, far away. You can have an X bar way over here, X bar way over here, farther away, and it's that's more likely. But in this case, when N is the biggest, it's kind of less likely to be way out here, to have an X bar way out here. It's less likely because you're going to be closer to 88 because you have more information. Your sample size is 25, so your X bars are going to be closer to 88. So increasing the sample size decreases the probability, this probability here. As n increases, the dispersion decreases, so your estimates are closer to 88, right in the middle. So the chance of getting an estimate as big as 100 or smaller, something way out here, is smaller. All right, last question, part E. What might you conclude of a random sample of 25 time intervals between eruptions having a mean longer than 100? In other words, if I sample 25 eruptions and their mean is out here, we found that the probability of having a mean out here was something like 0 0.013. That's a pretty small probability. It's very unlikely to get a probability of a mean being bigger than 100. That is, what do we say? 0 0.013. Well, okay, so that's super unlikely. Okay, this is a key idea for hypothesis testing right here. This is very important. What might you conclude? If, if you did take a sample and you got a mean way out here, like a mean, like an X bar way out here, what would you conclude? Well, since that's so rare and very unlikely, what we would conclude is that this is not 88. It's shifted to the right. It's got to be greater than 88. So we would conclude that mu is greater than 88. The population mean. We would conclude that this is bigger. All right. Hope that helps.